Stonewall. And this is just the modern version of the invasion of Stonewall. Um, when they came in and they raided Stonewall, this is this is how they instead raided us by um, by the internet. And it's as offensive to a marginalized uh, community in, in New York. And if you read the complaint, it's clearly homophobic. And the government should be ashamed of themselves for harassing our community and those of us who have um, been fighting for gay liberation and gay rights. So this case is just proceeding through the system. I guess today was sort of like just an appearance for yes, the defendant. Yes, it was when they set the date for the next, um, for the beginning of the trial. Uh, but this whole thing is a farce and a homophobic move um, by those who brought the charges forward. And it's really a disgrace and sets the civil rights movement back that this government could do that in today's day and age. You don't think that the owner of this service was taking advantage of young sex workers? No, everybody was of age and the people who participated, um, um, the, 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 it, they provided um, safety to people. It took people off the streets. It, it provided an arena in which people were able to meet other people. Um, it was not an illegal enterprise and it was an enterprise that was supported by the LGBT community and was recognized for so many years that until somebody decided that let's go after the gays, it was a non-issue. Yeah. So you're here in support anyway, and where are you from? You're from Brooklyn, are you with a member of a specific group? No, I'm not. And why, okay, why did you feel you needed to be here today? Because I've seen the problem. real work. That's what one of the posters says. Sex work is real work. Absolutely. Uh, what's your name, sir? Keith Chirac. How do you spell your last name? G-E-F-E-R-D-K. Thank you. Okay, there's one. You're here with a poster, too. <laughs> Xavier Hollander's memoir, and Jeffrey of Red Boy actually attended my reading, came up and hugged me afterwards and said, this is my story. It's happening now, 40 years later. She was deported for moral turpitude after cooperating with the FBI. So for me, this is just repeating history. Um, I also support sex workers legally, safely. Um, as research for the musical, I went to the Bunny Ranch in Nevada, where it's legal, and I found there to be no problem whatsoever. Girls were very happy, healthy, and safe, well educated, and not abused. All right, so you're here as someone who's an author, a playwright, and a producer. Producer, producer, okay. producer of the musical Happy Hooker. Okay. And also a friend of Jeffrey. And when is it supposed to open? Um, it might be in London this year, eventually. Okay, that's. And um, I have found actually the sex industry to be the biggest supporter of it. Ron Jeremy is slated to perform in a cameo role. And um, it's been really interesting to see the support of sex workers behind this musical because it's positivity and decriminalization of sex work. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm the oldest gay activist in America. Okay, hold on. Hold on. All right, hold on. Right he let the first few right. right. Okay, hold on a minute, please, sir. What did you just tell me? My name, I'm the oldest still active Mattachine member. I started in 1958. Mm -hmm. I um, left the gay movement to join the sex freedom movement to fight for legalized abortion and free legalization of prostitution. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture of me. In 1964, on the white button with the purple right. banner there, right. say that that's you that in the is, picture. That's me right behind Barbara Giddings. There's a famous picture in front of the uh, in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, okay. because we were we were the first regular demonstration. They have a monument there to us. I was hugged by Mayor Nutter in front of the hall this past July the fourth, mm -hmm. and uh, I 
hustled for one week and for one summer, 1959. And I always tell people that one 10 weeks of hustling, I would go to work at any job from nine to five for the rest of my young life because it's so terrible what you have to go through to survive through sex work. I did it as an experiment. I had family that was sending me back to school. But I know people that have gotten things like this on their record. They can't get a student loan. Their lives are literally destroyed. This is just like marijuana where the black people or any people get caught with one joint and they can't get a job, you can't get a student loan. I'm sure you can't get a student loan if you've ever been arrested and convicted for sex work. So we're essentially denying people the chance to lie. People don't do this kind of work, unless they're especially men, unless they're absolutely you know, desperate. Because let me tell you, what they put you through in this work, I mean, I've been a hustler of John and in a way a madam temporarily, and I can tell you that it's a self-destructive thing to be a prostitute. It's demeaning, it's degrading. What happens if you get in a long time, you have to resort to drugs because what it does to you inside is terrible. So do you think that this should not be regulated, though? It, listen, it, it, it should... Well, we could have it legal where you have to do it. You can't walk the street, you have to do it upstairs in your room like...